Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kyle and welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is a little different to the stuff that we normally make, but I feel like we need to have a conversation because I'm very confused. Now if you know me, you know I love Formula One. I watch every single race, I love it. I just can't get enough. And if you, like myself, also enjoy Formula One, then you probably know that there's some very, very interesting stuff happening within the Formula One world right now. For those that aren't super invested in the Formula One, let me break down a couple things for you because we have a lot to talk about. Now, before we jump into all the juicy details, let me give you a quick disclaimer because I don't know everything, okay? I'm not claiming to know everything, just want to talk about some race cars. I am fully aware how ruthless the F1 community can be. So I'm going to tell you this now, don't roast me, okay? Thank you. So like I said at the start, the F1 space has lately been riddled with drama. And we're going to have a bit of a look at it because I don't understand how the hell this has all happened. So the last race that we had the absolute pleasure of enjoying was at Hungary, at the Hungarian Grand Prix. We had Max Verstappen take the win, followed by Lewis Hamilton, and then George Russell in third. Didn't expect to see a Mercedes double podium, but it did. So here we are. But it's not specifically the race at Hungary that I want to talk about. It was an announcement that was made a few days beforehand. Mr. Sebastian Vettel, who is currently driving for Aston Martin announced his retirement from the Formula One series. Now this itself, whilst super sad to hear, isn't really that much of a surprise to most people, I think. Seb is an advocate and a voice for the climate change movement, and he's been very open about the fact that Formula One is not a carbon neutral sport, and I think he's been fighting with that for quite a while. So I don't think a lot of people were surprised to see him announce his retirement. Now whilst hearing the announcement of Seb's retirement is very sad, it is not the most dramatic thing that has happened within the last couple of weeks. Now, once the Hungarian Grand Prix is over, the teams then head into something called a summer break. There's a four week period where there's no races and the teams get a little bit of a breather to get themselves collected before heading into the last half of the season. And this is where our story takes a dive. Now, at the start of the summer break, a lot of teams are looking for drivers to fill their seats for the next year's season. If a driver's contract is coming to a close and a team feels like that driver would be best suited for their team, they're obviously gonna try and snatch them up. And now, as we know, Sebastian Vettel will not be racing next year, which means there is an available seat at Aston Martin. But wait, not anymore. Fernando Alonso changed teams. From Alpine, he will now be signing with Aston Martin for the next year's season. I'm sure I am not the only one that did not see this coming, but like I said at the start of the video, I'm pretty dumb, so it, it could have been very obvious. So we've now gone from Aston Martin having an available seat to Alpine having an available seat, and this is where it gets juicy. <laughs> now, like I said, if you're an F1 fan, you probably know what's coming. If you're not, let me introduce you to somebody called Oscar Piastri. Oscar Piastri is a 21-year-old Australian driver who is currently a reserve driver for the Alpine racing team. Now, Oscar was previously racing in F2, and he has definitely shown that he has the ability to be a fantastic driver and potentially even a world champion. So with him being young, having a lot of promise, and being a reserve driver for a team that now doesn't have a driver for the next season, you'd think... That's a logical decision to put him in the seat. Alpine thought so as well. So the Alpine F1 team made an announcement stating that Oscar Piastri will be filling that seat alongside Esteban Ocon in the next year's season. But one thing that they failed to do was apparently have this conversation with Oscar Piastri. Because a few hours after Alpine made this announcement, Oscar Piastri went straight to Twitter and said, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. I'm not driving for you next year. You can pause here if you want to read it. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, this sent F1 Twitter into a spiral. It was absolute mayhem. People were losing their minds, which I'm sure is quite understandable. Now, one thing that I do want to mention that I didn't know about when I first saw this all unfold on Twitter, Oscar Piastri was in Australia at the time. Alpine made their announcement at about 2.30 in the morning Australian time, which means Oscar was probably tucked into his bed, fast asleep, and then woke up about six hours after the announcement and saw what had happened. I'm sure you can imagine how he felt at that time. And that's when he's gone to Twitter to straighten out a couple of things. Now, not only did this start to make the F1 community feel a little bit like high school with all of the drama, it then started a sh ton of rumors. Everybody had their own theories about what was gonna happen with Oscar Piastri. 
LP now have a seat that they think is filled, but is obviously not. But now everyone knows that Oscar Piastri has not signed a contract for the 2023 season. So now with that information out there, you can only begin to imagine the amount of conspiracy theories that have arisen from people's predictions. At the time of all this unfolding, I think only 70% of drivers had contracts signed, so there was still quite a few seats available across the board. So it's really anyone's guess as to where he could pop up in the next year's season, if he does at all. So a couple days go by, rumors are still running rampant throughout the community, and nobody really has a full understanding as to what's gonna be happening with Oscar and any team next year. And then McLaren come out of nowhere with a flying elbow ready to throw everything that we thought we knew on its head. Now, as far as I'm aware, nothing has been set in writing, nothing has been confirmed. However, McLaren have stated that they will have Oscar Piastri drive for them in the 2023 season. Now, if you're new to F1, I'm sure you're thinking, well, that's good, good for him, well done. But there's a problem. McLaren already have two drivers filling both of their cars. They don't have an available seat, which is where we take another f***ing turn and add even more drama onto this bonfire of nightmares. So the current drivers from McLaren are Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris, both of whom have contracts that will go through the 2023 season. But that is not according to McLaren. Zach Brown, the current team principal of McLaren, has stated that he hopes to have Oscar Piastri replace Daniel Ricciardo for the 2023 season. Now, granted, the time that Daniel Ricciardo has been at McLaren, he has obviously struggled in comparison to his teammate, Lando Norris. I hate to say it, as a fellow Australian and a Danny Rick fan, he's just not been driving as well as Lando. Every driver is different, every car is different, but this season, Lando Norris just seems to be way more comfortable than McLaren than Daniel Ricciardo. And unfortunately, the results have proven that. But does that mean that McLaren can terminate Daniel Ricciardo's contract early early to slip Oscar Piastri into the seat for next year. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen the contracts. I'm not a lawyer. I have no freaking idea. However, Daniel Ricciardo doesn't seem to think so. He has approached McLaren and said that if you want to end my contract early to put another driver in my seat, I am requesting a payout of $21 million. That's a lot of four and 20 pies. Now, like I said at the start of the video, this is all speculation, okay? I don't have confirmed facts. I'm only going by what I've found on the interwebs. So I don't have all the information, but I'm sure that when McLaren do make an official announcement, it is gonna spread like wildfire. Now let's say for example, if McLaren do choose to buy out Daniel Ricciardo's contract, does that mean that he's not gonna race in F1? Not necessarily. <laughs> Having a look through the current drivers who have not re-signed their contracts, we have quite a few names still on that list. Let's just quickly smash through them. Let's start off with the GOAT, Nicholas Latifi. Latifi was racing for Williams. He has not re-signed his contract. So there is still an available seat there alongside his old teammate, Alex Albert. Next we have Mick Schumacher. Schumacher was racing for Haas, obviously the son of the world famous Michael Schumacher, but he has not re-signed his contract. Mick's start to the season was pretty rough, but I think in the last couple of race weekends, he has absolutely shown improvement, getting points after points after points. I think Mick has a brilliant career ahead of him, and if he can stay in the same trajectory of improvement, he could absolutely be a world champion. I'll be very interested to see if Haas do re-sign him alongside his teammate, Kevin Magnussen, who does have a multi-year contract with Haas. I'll be very disappointed if he doesn't get re-signed or picked up by another team. Next up, we have Guan Yu Zhou, who is in his debut F1 season, the only Chinese driver on the grid, and as I'm sure most of you have seen the clips, had a very terrible crash at the start of the Silverstone Grand Prix. <laughs> Freaking terrifying. Now, Joe's current teammate, Valtteri Bottas, does have a multi-year contract with Alfa Romeo. Joe does not. So I'll be very interested to see how this plays out for him and see where he ends up. Hopefully still with Valtteri, because I think he has a lot to learn from Bottas, but you never know. And last but not least, we have future restaurant owner himself, Yuki Tsunoda. Tsunoda is currently racing with Alfa Tauri alongside his teammate, Pierre Gasly. Gasly has got a contract signed until the end of 2023, Sonoda still hasn't heard anything. I think both Yuki and Pierre have fantastic potential, but I'll be very interested to see what Alpha Tauri do with their available seat. So there you go, quite a bit of drama to unpack over the last couple of weeks, and I guarantee you, this is not over. Over the next couple of weeks, more and more announcements are gonna be made as to what drivers are gonna be racing for which teams, and that number of available seats is slowly gonna get smaller 
and smaller. I am very, very interested to see what the final lineup is gonna look like for 2023, and if Daniel Ricciardo is still racing for McLaren. At this stage, probably not, but we'll see. Now I know that this is a very different video to the stuff that I normally post, so if this is weird, I'm sorry. I had to talk about it, okay? It was chewing me up. But more importantly, I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know, I have to talk about this. Where do you think Oscar Piastri is gonna end up? What do you think's gonna happen with McLaren? I've got so many questions. Tell me everything. Give me your opinions. I don't care what they are. Tell me everything. So just leave me a comment down below and we, we can talk about fast cars, okay? Uh, love you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Also subscribe, I post new videos every week. You don't want to miss it. If you guys want to come and join us on any of our live streams, I'll leave all the information in the description below. Come and say, I was hearted. If you want to find us on any of our social media, I'll leave all the links to stuff in the description, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, our Discord server, whatever. It's all down there. Come let me know you found this video. I would love to meet you. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. I love your faces. Bye.